This task will walk you through the process of applying basic labels to the map. Lab 7 in this course will cover advanced labeling techniques, so for this map we'll just keep the labeling fairly simple and focus on overall map design, layout, and projection choices. Here I have QGIS desktop open where I left off with task 1, and to do some basic labeling I'm going to open up the layer properties for our layer, switch to the labels tab, and I'll check the label this layer with and then choose the field to label and I'm going to be choosing a field called postal and I'll just take the defaults and click OK so let's consider the labels for a few moments first the size may be too small to reliably read second the labels are offset from center in some states which looks awkward third in the smaller states along the east coast the labels are very difficult to read because they overlap with the state boundary lines Lastly, some states may not be labeled, so let's correct each of these issues. I'll reopen the layer properties, and on the labels tab, there are several sub-tabs that let you control different aspects of the labeling. I'll click on the text option, and instead of the default font, I'll choose Arial, and I'll change the size from the default to a font size of 14, and I'll click OK. Now we're getting somewhere. The labels are now clearly visible size-wise. However, now we need to adjust the placement of the labels to put them in more desirable locations. So let's work on that next. I'll reopen Layer Properties, and this time I'm going to choose the Placement tab, and I'm going to change the placement to Around Centroid, and I'll click OK. Now the labels are really coming together. There's a few labels that are still not placed optimally, but most of the labels are placed nicely. We'll deal with the non-optimal label placement in Lab 3 when we work on the layout. Now we'll address the smaller states and the difficulty in reading their labels due to overlap with state boundaries. Let's apply a buffer to the labels to provide a nice white canvas for them to sit on. So I'll reopen layer properties and again go to the labels tab and this time I'll choose the buffer option and I'll check the box to draw text buffer and I'm going to slide the transparency slider till it gets to about 20 percent and a pen join style of round and then I'll click OK. So now the labels are definitely easier to read, but we can do something a little more non-traditional and put a different background behind the labels to make them even easier to read. Instead of a buffer that follows the strokes of the letters, let's put a semi-transparent white ellipsis behind the text. So again, I'll open up the layer properties. I'm going to uncheck the buffer option. I'm going to go to the background. I'll check draw background and the shape will be an ellipse. Size type, I'll keep it buffer and the size X and Y I'll put it negative 0.5. The negative sizes here will make the ellipse smaller and tighter around the label. And I'll set the transparency to 40 percent. And I'll click OK. Each state now has an easily readable label. However, if you prefer the buffer to this ellipse, feel free to change that back, or better yet, explore other labeling options and find one that you prefer. However, for the remainder of this lab, in lab 2 and 3, the assumption is that you have ellipses behind the labels. So if you do not, you may need to adapt the lab instructions to fit your label choices. The fourth issue we identified with the labels earlier is that some states may not have labels. If you find that there are some states without a label still, you can go back into the label properties, switch to the rendering tab, and select show all labels for this layer, including colliding labels that'll force QGIS to place all the labels on the map. Another useful setting, if I go back into Label Properties on this Rendering tab, is to suppress label features smaller than a certain size. So we could set this to one millimeter and it will discourage QGIS from labeling small features. And this would be the case where you have multi-part features with multiple polygons. We now have a reasonably well labeled map. There are a few tweaks still to be made, however we'll stop working with the labels for now and we'll revisit them in lab 3.